I don't want to get too far into this because it gets into the, some of the techniques I use. But uh, you know, lately we've been talking about easements. Now, this I guess maybe is the, one of the more important things. Uh, more important things that I, I think I just want to drive home. Okay, so if we have a situation where somebody's property is being taken involuntarily, and let's say you didn't pay the mortgage, okay, I really, you know, what are you going to do? I don't like the, the banks either, but you signed the mortgage and they didn't pay for whatever reason. Maybe it's, you know, something outrageous happened to you. Sorry it happened, but whatever. So the thing is, if you have the right to sell your property, you have the right to describe an easement and enter into an easement contract with a third party, meaning that other party doesn't currently have an interest in your property, <laughs> in the title, that is. So... If you write up the easement, fine. You you you've given away some of the rights and you put them in the contract and whatever that deal is, that'll survive a foreclosure of the title. And you can see how we could use this, right? We've discussed this before, but here's the most important thing, I think. So once we have this, we just have this is what I'll just tell you. We, so we have a case right now where the the judge, it's one of these permitting cases in California, and the judge, uh. So, so somebody is, there's a receiver administering the permitting violations in foreclosing, not, they're not really foreclosing, but let's just say, just for the sake of this conversation, uh, uh, the county is foreclosing for permitting violations. And so the, the, the person who's the title holder still recorded an easement, basically taking most of the uh, rights he had as the title holder and conveying them over to the easement holder. Well, they don't like that. They appeared on public record, okay? So the receiver went to the judge and said, judge, what do, what do I do? He said, judge, what do I do? Literally. And what he's doing is he's saying, judge, please order that the easement is void. <laughs> That's what he, really what he's doing. But it doesn't matter, and you'll see why. All right, so first of all, the judge is sitting in a proceeding where the plaintiff has opened the court's jurisdiction and has, and the court does have jurisdiction over the subject and over the person. Everyone's been served properly. They waive service. It's already there. It's been on the docket for a year and a half. And the court's purview is limited to claims on the title. The parties to the easement are not in the court. They've not been summoned. There is no controversy before the court involving the easement between the easement contracting parties. There's a receiver over here that has to do with claims on the title that doesn't like the fact that there's an easement on there. So he wants the judge to reach outside of his jurisdiction and just do something to it, in which the judge kindly obliged and issued an order stating that it was void or something like that, which is void. The order is void. So you have to look at it like this. Do I do I want to argue with him? Nah, I don't have to. He's a judge. He's an agent of the judicial power. We don't need him. He's not even bothering us. He's not even bothering us. Because look at the easement instrument. There's an arbitration clause. And an arbitration form is convened, all right? That will, that not that it has to, by the way, it doesn't have to do this, but it will. The arbitration forum, the panel, will probably find that the judge's order was without jurisdiction, and it will explain itself. The arbitration panel will explain itself. Now, once the arbitration panel, in this easement contract, makes its final ruling, it'll turn into what's called an arbitration award. And the prevailing party, probably going to be the petitioner, if that's the case, well, petitioner will go and apply to that same court for confirmation of the award that just voided the void order from the other judge in the same court. Because people have the judicial power, and I'm showing you how to exercise it with these contracts. What good is an easement and property rights that you described and wrote up so eloquently without the means to enforce it, using the same court. And I don't have to argue with the judge and I don't have to appeal him because I already set it up in advance. It's already under arbitration. You see how that works?
this is this is happening though because there's a there's a, a rush to to uh, restrict our access to resources. Okay, so let's just say resources, meaning maybe water, power, right, energy, probably, and supplies like food, you know, hardware, goods, services, things like that, but just goods, food, but then also not just food, but the use of the land. As you're seeing, the 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 ranchers being destroyed, right? The beef ranchers and so forth. There's a move to to to, to destroy it or to impose horrible conditions on accessing it. Either submit to our agenda or starve, right? We know this is coming. Uh, and I think I think there's a struggle to get this in place. Maybe I'm naive, but maybe there might be a struggle. Uh, but I'm showing you where where things come from okay this is my this is my whole purpose for 30 years and i didn't realize that we get into into so much but i just thought i would just stick with the uh, debt collections you know but it's really about property rights 